Welcome back to week two of Resting in Design Rhythms, where we're talking about the habit of Sabbath. And this week, the bottom line is that we gather weekly to worship because Jesus gathered weekly to worship. Right, just like all of the formational habits that we're pursuing um, in this series, we want to make sure they're anchored in the life of Jesus. In fact, that's the reason we would put them into practice because he's our leader, we're his follower, mm -hmm. and so Sabbath is no exception to any of these other practices. We see that Jesus honored the Sabbath day, he kept it holy, he valued its importance, and therefore it must hold value and importance for mm -hmm. us if it did for him. Sure. Uh, so not only for Jesus, but his apostles, and we see that in this, the two short passages that we're looking at today in groups, um, they're actually written by the same author. So the author of the Gospel of Luke and wrote Acts, and they kind of both start the same way. If you look at the very first verses in Luke and the very first verses in Acts, you'll see, you know, my dear Theophilus, and I wanted to give you an account. And so, and obviously in the Gospel of Luke, we have the account of Jesus. And in this particular passage, we see that Jesus made it his custom. It was his custom, Luke said, to show up in a synagogue every Sabbath day to gather with other believers in the one true God and and worship and read scripture and do the things that they did when they gathered on the Sabbath day together. It was just part of their gathering. And then again, in Acts, it's not surprising from the same author to hear the same language, but this time used about the Apostle Paul and saying that even as he traveled around, you know, in, on his missionary journeys, wherever he was, he would seek out a gathering of the people of God. And it was his custom to gather in those right. places and to also seek out opportunities there to share like, Hey guys, let me fill you in on what's been happening and about this guy named Jesus. Right. So yeah, without question, because it was such a Jewish practice, it was also a custom of Jesus and his apostles, um, as we do see in the text today. But it could be a little confusing, Neil, as we read through the gospel accounts, because it seems like one of the things that Jesus is criticized about so often is actually breaking Sabbath rules, mm -hmm. both he and his disciples. Um, it's interesting though, the things that he's criticized for on the Sabbath are things like healing other people, <laughs> yeah. um, gleaning wheat from the field so that the needs of his disciples are met. Um, things that would not seem preposterous to you and me at all, but violated some of what the Sabbath had become. Sure. And I think that's where we have to be careful to distinguish that because maybe you're like me, you've read through the gospel stories of Jesus and you're like, does Jesus actually care about the Sabbath? Because it seems like he is, you know, violating it so often. Mm -hmm. um, but in reality, he's restoring the heart of it yeah. and reminding the people who had made all of these peripheral rules and traditions around the Sabbath, what the heart, the spirit of the Sabbath really was. And in that, I think there's some correlation to us today that maybe some of us have grown up kind of legalistic around Sabbath worship in particular, and um, maybe even have lost sight of what adds meaning and why that can be such a rich custom for us to adhere to. Um, and so that's one of the things we're hoping will come out in discussion today, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, if we are kind of rejecting that legalism, probably if you, like me, have partly done that on Jesus' shoulders, saying like, look, Jesus pushed back against the legalism of his day. Mm. You know, look at all the ways that he violated Sabbath, so what's the big deal with all these rules? And it is easy to kind of miss the fact that Jesus was living in Sabbath. And he said, you know, I came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it, to kind of to bring it back into its right and proper perspective. And, and so Jesus would, was fond of reminding people like, look, remember that the Sabbath is a gift for people. People aren't a gift for Sabbath, right? Like uh, it's, it's supposed to be restful. Like <laughs> we can heal people on the Sabbath. It's okay for people to eat if they're hungry on the Sabbath. Like let's get real here, people. <laughs> you know, so it was kind of really restoring sure. Sabbath. And so maybe this is an opportunity for us to restore Sabbath as well in our lives and to think about like what could this look like if it wasn't a legalistic thing, but just a rich gift that we're receiving from God and a, and a correct rhythm of living with God and how could we restore this as a good and healthy habit. Right. 
And I think that's where we have to, you know, start to ask questions even about our gatherings on the Sabbath and what, what does that look like in a way that really honors the Sabbath and um, that leans into the spirit of the Sabbath. And so, you know, one of the things that we've been um, challenging one another with in this season is when we come to a gathering, what do we come in looking for? Do we come in kind of with a consumer mindset of like, what am I going to receive today? Or what is, you know, convenient? What is inconvenient? What's in my comfort zone? What's out not in my comfort zone? Or do we really come in with a heartbeat of like, I'm here to mutually you know, encourage and be encouraged with other believers as I gather on this Sabbath. Yep. And so we said, you know, if we come in kind of looking to do a few things, it could really help create a culture of Sabbath that is, yeah. uh, I think, like mind blowing actually. Yeah, and I think you've got three things that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are really good and, and you've mentioned them to us before, but if you'd go through them again. Right, so to say that when we come in, one of our objectives should be to put courage in someone. Um, you know, when if I come in to the gathering on Sabbath and um, I'm not just thinking about my own self-interest, but really saying, God, give me eyes to see who you see today here who needs some encouragement? And then how can I speak into their life? How could I put courage into them? And be intentional to have that conversation. It might be a, a one sentence phrase, you like, know. Hey, that Andrew, you're killing it in this video right now. Right, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it could be that. It could be a, a little bit long, lengthier of a conversation, but I think that God places that on our heart. Yeah. And then there begins this be this mutual edification. That's one of the things we see in scripture that's supposed to characterize the Christian gathering in Hebrews. It says, let us not forsake the gathering as some are in the habit of doing, but we're spurring one another on toward love and good deeds and encouraging one another yep. all the more as we believe it's mm -hmm. getting closer to Christ's return. And yep. so um, that's a great way to, I think, reclaim the Sabbath gathering. Mm -hmm. um, and get back to its heartbeat. And then also to pray for one another by name, pray for someone by name. Yeah. Um, and again, that might be literally, you know, someone shares a need with you and um, instead of us giving the pat answer of, well, you know, I'll pray for you about that this week. And you yeah. know, like say, can I pray with you about that? And just voice a prayer. And yeah. again, it could be a sentence prayer. Yep, yeah, doesn't have um, to be a big deal. And you know, even if you're not at a place where you're, comfortable voicing a prayer in front of someone else, you could still pray for them by name and then let them know, like, I prayed for you today by name. Um, again, I think we see that sometimes we've lost the heart beat mm -hmm. of a gathering when, when there's a strange absence of prayer among God's people, we've, we're yeah. missing something. Well, we've made it very private mm -hmm. and along with much of our faith, but our faith is supposed to be a sh thing shared in community. So it's not you bragging, unless you're bragging. Yeah. <laughs> it's not you bragging to say, hey, I'm, I prayed for you this morning. That's doing your faith out loud. That's doing your faith in community and we Absolutely. need more of that. Mm -hmm. How encouraging, I, w I was prayed for by name <laughs> today, yeah. you know? Um, and then the last thing really is participate beyond convenience, all with, all that to say, you know, that could look like a, a, a whole lot of different things, mm -hmm. but it reminds us that even in Sabbath gathering, like Sabbath is not just um, like a day of therapy. No. <laughs> As you know, maybe more of a worldly mm -hmm. viewpoint, but it really is a day. Day of the spot. Um, <laughs> where even in that day of rest and delight and worship, that may mean that God is going to kind of call us out of what is convenient or comfortable, you know, and it's when he stretches us out of those places sometimes of our comfort zone that we actually delight more fully and um, we worship more deeply because mm -hmm. he takes us somewhere. And um, so when we come into the gathering with that idea, um, again, we're not thinking of our own self-interest and what can I consume today? We're coming with a spirit of, what does God have to, to pour through me today? Any act of worship is going to cost us something. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember King David said that. And yeah. he's like, don't ask me. I'm not going to give an offering that costs me nothing. You know? And mm -hmm. so I think if, if Sabbath is partly about worship, then it is partly about sacrifice yeah. and, and service. So. Right. 
happen. So anyways, I just get a vision of like, if we capture that on a Sabbath gathering, it creates such an environment and such a, a community of blessing, you know, that it's something we would hunger for. Like you don't want to, if you can't make it to the gathering on Sabbath, you genuinely feel like you have missed something, not just the encouragement maybe you would have received or the prayer that would have been voiced over you, but also this sense of like, I missed encouraging someone today. I missed praying for someone today. I missed, you know, yeah. seeing what God was going to call me into today. And, um, I, I think if we reclaim those, ask those questions, like the gathering is so much more than just a content download or something to consume. It really is this living, breathing community of Jesus followers who are just in it together. Yeah. And that gets exciting. That's life giving. So talk about it with your group today. How do we make our worship gatherings a habit we look forward to?